Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fleckdiss channel. The concept of airdrops has been around for decades. Freighters were designed with rear access ramps that could be lowered in flight and special flooring with metal rollers, allowing smooth ejection of heavy equipment. The U.S. Air Force has various transport aircraft in its arsenal. However, the most notable workhorse is the C-17 Globemaster, capable of carrying 170,000 pounds of cargo. Using C-17s, the U.S. military airdrops weapons, equipment, and Humvees from as much as 5,000 feet from the ground. The High Mobility Multipurpose Wheeled Vehicle, or HMMWV, or simply Humvee, is a four-wheeler military truck and loading it onto a C-17 aircraft is quite simple. They are driven into the cargo bay through the rear ramp and secured with attachment points on the floor, which refrain them from shifting from one place to another. The Humvees can weigh as much as 8,500 pounds, and therefore, if not tied to the floor, they can easily damage other equipment in the cargo bay during takeoff and flight. When the cargo compartment is full and all the Humvees are in place, the door is closed until the aircraft reaches the drop location. Preparing the Humvees prior to an airdrop is a whole different story. The aircrew loads the vehicles onto heavy-duty pallets using tension cables. And each pallet is further attached with a parachute to ensure the supplies make it safely to the ground. Upon nearing the drop location, the C-17 lowers its rear cargo ramp and the Humvees are released. As they reach the edge of the rear ramp, parachute cords attached to a line in the cargo bay are pulled, which causes the parachute to open as soon as the pallet hits the air. Before all of this occurs, on the rear end of the aircraft, the pilot and the navigator in the cockpit perform precise calculations in order to calculate an appropriate airspeed and altitude at which the pallets must be airdropped. Without these calculations, the aircraft could easily overshoot or undershoot the target, dropping the cargo into a less desirable or potentially dangerous location. Airdrops are carried out by specially trained crew members known as loadmasters, who are trained in special cargo handling techniques. The loadmaster works closely with pilots and other crew members to accurately place cargo on the plane using scientific and mathematical principles to ensure the safety of everyone on board. In October 2019, 
the U.S. Army conducted an Arctic anvil exercise at the Camp Shelby Joint Forces Training Center in Mississippi, where the loadmasters carried out airdrop operations from C-130 Hercules. This demonstration assisted the loadmasters in understanding the importance of airdrops in austere locations on the battlefield, where driving a supply truck is nearly impossible. Becoming an efficient loadmaster is not an easy task. They are required to perform various training exercises, such as the service tail trainer exercise that focuses on loading and unloading operations. Moreover, the loadmasters are taught the skills of weighing the vehicles, cargo restraint calculations, and the proper use of checklists. You want to get some AC going? Yeah. They weigh the vehicles and then load them onto the aircraft while simultaneously ensuring proper weight distribution for flight. The loadmasters train to load and unload vehicles and cargo of different sizes. We're just looking to break away from our, our traditional methods. So here at Dover, we haven't seen these kind of vehicles being loaded onto aircraft between the, the trainees for loadmasters in, in five plus years. The loadmasters also perform offload training, which requires proper planning, coordination, and communication among the members of the air crew. The loadmasters tightly secure the cargo container with chains and slide it toward the rear ramp. The aircraft lowers the ramp, and the cargo container is placed on the back of a flatbed truck that transports it to the desired location. The team has to work together in unison to perform this task successfully. Even a minor mishap can damage the surrounding equipment worth millions of dollars. The concept of airdrops can also be used to provide emergency flood relief aid. There are some areas like South Sudan's Mobin County, where the food stocks are brought in with the help of barge and trucks. However, during the rainy season, it is impossible to reach Mobin County by road, which is why the only option to provide sufficient food to the refugees is by air. At least one month's worth of food supplies is airdropped in the affected areas, which gives barges and trucks additional time to bring food into Mobin County. The refugees pick up the food supplies from the ground and take it back to their homes. The only way to bring sufficient food to these people in this circumstance is by air. And since there are no possibilities to land the planes in where these refugees are, we have to drop it from the air. Airdrops can also assist in search and rescue missions at sea. Zodiac Milpro, an inflatable boat, is rolled in a waterproof bow bag, 
transported via a helicopter and airdropped directly into the water, where the military personnel receive it to perform low-profile operations. It provides the military the capability to hide their boat underwater during the night-day infiltration phase of the operation and to reinflate it after the mission for exfiltration. This raft is also used for search and rescue operations and helps recover victims in any situation. The concept of airdropping supplies from an aircraft is not just limited to land-based applications. The U.S. military utilizes large cargo planes to airdrop supply packages to sea vessels, such as the submarines that remain operational for extended periods. The cramped space in a submarine does not provide much storage space, so it carries supplies that last roughly 90 days. After this time frame, the submarines resurface in the open sea to replenish supplies. Due to its compact size, the package is released from the side door of the C-17, and as soon as it exits the cabin, an attached parachute is deployed, which slows down the descent of the package for a smooth landing on the water surface. The C-17 Globemaster features a Joint Precision Airdrop System, or J-PADS, that uses a global positioning satellite, steering parachutes, and an onboard computer. We've been contacted Atlanta Center 120.45. All of this helps the pilot compute the exact airdrop location while considering the altitude, wind direction, and speed of the aircraft. So, an effective way is to airdrop supplies directly onto the submarine's deck with the help of a helicopter, such as the SH-60 Seahawk. The helicopters use a cargo hook and cargo netting to airdrop supplies. This way, helicopters can conduct several airdrop operations back and forth. Airdrops are of significant importance in various scenarios for both civilian and military purposes. In case the enemy forces have disrupted the ground supply route, airdropping supplies is the go-to solution for the military. The U.S. Navy uses the same concept in airdrop rafts for search and rescue missions at sea. Meanwhile, airdrops also enable the provision of supplies like food, water, shelter, and medical equipment to the civilians as flood relief aid. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.